Welcome to experimental collagraph making part one. In this video, I wanted to show you how I made this collagraph using melted plastic, acrylic mediums and pastes. Hope you enjoy the video. In this part one, I wanted to show you how I built this plate in order to achieve this proof print. So I will take you through all the detail of creating this plate right up to the proof print. In part two, I'm going to show you how I apply different colour techniques to bring this print to life. Now, you could argue that black and white is okay and that's the way you want it. But I also wanted to show you how you can experiment with colour techniques. This video is basically about experimentation. I wanted to show you how can you can really utilise all sorts of materials and push the boundaries of this wonderful printing technique. Um, I hope I can inspire you to try different things. It's just so much fun and so many different possibilities of achieving very exciting results. If you have any techniques that you would like to share or you would like me to try out, please tell me and I would love to do it. I made these um, little collages um, a while ago while I was doing a Sally Hurst's course. Um, and uh, I really rather like them and I think they really lend themselves into creating great holographs. Um, really, I'd like to do all of them as holographs, but this one I think is quite interesting because it has some sort of organic form in it. It could almost be a landscape. It was unintentional, but I could do something interesting with it. So I like this kind of earthy uh, pattern here. It could almost be stones and this could almost be a tree. It was just a, a bit of collage paper. Um, but I might use that and um, create this sort of um, feel. How I'm going to do it, I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, but yeah, there's lots of really, really interesting details. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a go at it and see what I end up with. It's always fun to see how plastic will melt. Um, so I've got a travel iron that I bought. It's my studio iron. Uh, hopefully it'll get hot enough. I don't know what the quality of the iron is, but um, I try with various packaging. This one is like really soft plastic, which makes me think it might not actually be very good for melting. I think more cellophane type of noise making plastic will be better. But I just just curious, just really wanted to see. So I've got Teflon paper, which is reusable. I can see it crinkling. Oh, that is quite good. That's fab. Right. Plastic is often used in food, sort of dividing cheese slices or lasagna sheets and things like that. I think that will be a great one. To melt. Oh. That is nice. This is really awesome. Look at that fabulous texture. So I've chosen this um, heated plastic because it has sort of really organic shapes here that I wanted to be present in in my piece so I'm I think I'm going to um, mm, just kind of glue it on here 
Okay, so I'm just going to apply some acrylic media at the back, just gloss medium. So again, I've learned this, I would just like to point out, I've learned this at um, Sally Hurst's uh, Colograph course, which she's a bit of a hero of mine. She's absolutely amazing. And I would really recommend doing her course if you want to know everything there is to know about Colography. Um, it's just fabulous. So anyway, I just wanted to mention her name because she is incredible. Um, and she... Um, showed this technique on her video so here we go um just going to give it a quick dry with a hair dryer So the idea is to stick it down like so with my hot iron again and teflon sheet and hopefully I've got enough gloss medium there. You should really probably do it twice. There you go, there's a couple of bubbles in there. That's pretty cool. Okay, next what I'm going to tackle is this dark area here. So because it's got really colors you feel about it, I'm going to do it on a piece of paper that will be painted on with uh, some Migration Light Oxide so I can get some really dark bits there and have a really painterly effect. Um, there's also a bit here which um, I think I used uh, some glitter on. So I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of glitter on it um, and perhaps have some texture as well. Um, and again, I would like to see that shape here somehow. So perhaps I will have a um, cutout as well here. So I've decided to use light moulding paste and make a shape um, here. So um, in order to achieve that, I'm going to just use masking tape for now and see how I get on. Um, just to give a general idea of that shape. Okay, so I'm just going to apply the light moulding paste with a palette knife. It is going to print dark, but I'm going to play with it. I'm going to perhaps uh, treat it with a bit of... I don't want it to be completely dark, so I will probably give it some gloss medium now what I want to get is a little bit of texture here
so I'm going to get some cling film. Just I want it to, to be a bit crinkled up. Just a little bit, roughen it up a little bit. Just give it a little scratch. Now let's do some glitter. I'm hoping this glitter will embed. I'm not sure if it will. I'm hoping it will. It still needs a bit of drying time. But in the meantime, what I could do is work on these shapes here. And I'm going to treat it first of all with micaceous iron oxide paint. Then I'm going to do pebbles on top of it. Although I kind of like what's happening there. I really like this. Let me just move that up. I like how this has sort of happened like that. Going to create a collage paper. I'm going to use marker pad pa paper. And I'm just going to be really free with it. Take a paintbrush. Kind of into the splatters, to be honest. That's really awesome. I am, because the bottle is right at the end, I am going to really play now and use this. If not for this, I will certainly use it for something else because I'm loving this. If you can see what I'm doing, I'm just uh, taking a piece of foil and creating some bigger shapes on here. I don't want to spoil them too much as they are pretty groovy. I might even use that as a collage paper itself because I quite like what's going on here. Well, I can use this as well as this. So I'm very excited about this. Let's do this one. Take the masking tape off. I'm hoping it hasn't spilled underneath because that would be a bit rubbish. A really nice, well, I want a nice clean line. 
funky. I'm going to use heavy body matte medium to push these shapes through. Um, let's just put some. It's a really good worker, but it's quite thick, but it's matte as well. I don't want it to be glossy. Right, let's see. That's quite cool. Um, a little bit of those flakes, because I guess we've had some flakes here. It could be good to repeat something somewhere else. And because they are not going to trap any ink, they could be quite good offset. Right, so some of it has dried a little bit, not quite, but I'm going to talk about my so-called tree, but not really tree. Um, it's going to be something here that resembles a tree. Um, I want the shapes to be quite sharp, so I'm going to use this tape, but I don't want it to be completely shiny, so I'm going to modify it. Well, I would like some patterns on this tape. I'm going to use uh, magnesium oxide. What I want is some heavy body acrylic paint. So let's say I'm going to use a bit of white. Actually, it's kind of not sticking very well, but um, it's quite cool. Some acacias. Okay, everything is nice and dry. So I think I'm ready, including my tapes so I think I am ready to um, start with the tree So here I saw a bit of opportunity. I had some of this pattern from the light molding paste 
um, come off onto the um, masking tape, so I decided to use it. So in my original design, I've got this piece of collage paper, and this is the reason why I made this. Make I'm gonna basically make a viewfinder shape. Kind of like that. This is cool. Um, this has got elements of, yes, this is what I want. Yeah. Hmm, I've got a little shape here like that, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm happy. So, a bit of gloss media. Okay, so I have quite a few areas covered. There's still a lot of empty ground I need to take care of. Uh, here, I was planning to do some crackle paste. So let's start with uh, crackle paint. I'm gonna start with the heavy body matte gel matte medium basically because i'm not really sure what i'm going to do here i'm just gonna just crack on and be bold and see what happens it's just going to take a dry brush Just very, very gently go over just a little bit because I don't want it to be too dark. So I have a bit of plastic that I have, um, I have melted. What I could do is I could press against it in here just to give it some interesting texture. Here we go. I think I'm going to do some tile adhesive here. Tile adhesive will trap ink. It's very thick. Um, I like using it because it you can embed shapes into it. It's rough, gritty. Um, again, it's something I found out on Sally Hurst's she uses it a lot. Um, I would really, if you want to learn more about calligraphy, her courses are incredible. Um, yeah, tile, tile adhesive is really good fun. You can get multi layers like this, which are really fun. I quite like the way um, Scrim shows a, a pattern, sort of um, pattern, which is not too distracting from 
the rest of the image. This will hug this way. Yeah, that's cute. I like it. I think what I'd like to see now is a bit of line. And if this is supposedly a tree, a really good way of getting some line in would be perhaps do some lines here, suggesting there is um, some branches. Um, so I'm going to take a dry point tool. Yeah, I've got some matte medium. I don't want it to be glossy. Um, it would be nice to have a variety of tones. Just a little bit. Okay. So proof print for me, as always, is going to be in black. So I'm not going to use a palette knife. The card is a little bit more gentle. Right, the plate is ready, inked up, and ready to put on a press and print it. I'm really pleased with it. So the proof so far, I'm really happy with. Um, so just to show you some detail, the crackle paste came out so good. I love it. Look at all this really fun detail and just incredible um, results. Um, so you can see the heavy body is sort of medium 
Heavy Body Gel, it's sort of medium, a matte one, medium tone. Came out really nicely against this really dark micaceous oxide in the background. Uh, the um, glitter, because it's shiny, it, it doesn't trap ink, so you can really see it. It's just got that sparkle, and again here, the same case, it just, on the dark background especially, it looks brilliant. These little detail, I quite like the middle bit because it sort of sits in its own right and it's organic. So I have lots and lots of sharp edges and a bit, a bit in the middle is sort of more organic. So it's got a good contrast with the rest. I love the tree. So um, you can see this bit here is just so fun. Um, the melted plastic has given me some really delicate but fun kind of detail. Um, and what's really nice about the foil is that it, when you stick it on, it shows what's beneath it a little bit as well, which is really good. Um, so my mixture of heavy body and micaceous oxide, iron oxide paint on top of the aluminium tape. Um, really like that because it's giving me a nice variety on this tape. Yeah, so all in all, I like the black and white, but now I'm going to experiment with a bit of colour. Uh, but that's going to happen in part two. So I hope you come back to the part two of the video and I'm going to use the same plate and do some perhaps chincolets, maybe some um, viscosity and alapape colours. Stick around and I'll hopefully see you in part two. Mm -hmm.